Welcome one and all. This is the ancient journey. On today's journey, Peter Bergman. But before we get started, don't forget, if you enjoy the video, please give us a like and a share and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on those notifications. And if there's a story out there you'd like to see us turn into a video, drop it in the comments section down below. Now let's get started. Do you know the case of the Somerton Man or Tom Amshud? If not, I'll put a link in the description to it. And after you watch it, and as bizarre as that case is, believe it or not, it happened again. On June 12th of 2009, a slender, older man boarded a bus at the Ulster Bus Depot in Derry, Ireland, heading towards the Sligo Station bus stop. He carries with him a shoulder bag and one piece of luggage, and he steps off the bus in Sligo, grabs a taxi, and heads to a local hotel. He finds that hotel full, but he finds the next one, the Sligo City Hotel, has vacancies. He pays cash as he checks in, signing the name Peter Bergman on the registry and giving a home address of Vienna, Austria. The clerk checks him in, noting his thick German accent, his tanned skin, and his bright blue eyes. Peter is well-dressed in dark business attire, and he's a frequent smoker. He'll be seen outside the hotel on several occasions enjoying a cigarette. The next day, Peter leaves the hotel and walks to the local post office, buying eight 80 cent stamps and some airmail stickers. The day after that, Peter hailed a cab, asking the driver for the best local beach that was quiet, where Peter could grab a swim that day. The taxi driver took Peter to Ross's Point Beach, and after a brief survey of the area, Peter asked to be taken back to his hotel. On Monday, June 15th, Peter checked out of his room, handing in his room key. He leaves the hotel with a shoulder bag, a purple plastic bag, and strangely a totally different piece of luggage than he arrived with. Peter walked to the bus station, stopped at a small store, stood awkwardly in the door for a few minutes, and then moved along. He found a place to eat, ordering a sandwich and a coffee at the bus station. And while seated, Peter is rummaging through his papers he pulls from his pockets. He tears the papers apart and tosses them into a local trash bin. The bus arrives and takes Peter to Ross's Point. Peter walks the beach that afternoon, casually greeting people who pass by as he enjoys his stroll. The next morning, the body of Peter Bergman is found on the beach at Ross's Point. Two persons training for a triathlon find Peter dead on the beach. He's wearing only a t-shirt and swim trucks. It appears as if Peter had indeed tried to enjoy a swim. Most of his clothing is left on the beach and Peter's body has washed up on the shore. The local police assume a tragic drowning. But as the coroner begins the post-mortem report, a Pandora's box of questions slowly begins to open. Peter, you see, did not drown. The coroner does find that, other than good dental work, Peter is in extremely poor health. He has advanced prostate cancer and bone tumors. His heart shows evidence of numerous previous heart attacks. One of his kidneys is missing, having been removed in surgery years prior. The examiner expects to find numerous medications and painkillers in Peter's system. Due to his health status, Peter would have been in an immense amount of pain. He would have required pain medicine just to make it through the day. But the coroner finds no such things in the toxicology report. The coroner also finds no signs of foul play. Peter's death is a mystery. Police begin to go through Peter's belongings to determine his identity and confirm if there are any next of kin. 
Peter's wallet lacks identification of any kind. All of Peter's clothing, from his business-like attire to his swim trunks, have had the tags cut from them, perhaps to avoid them being identified as being from a certain store or certain place. The pockets of his clothing are all completely empty. There are no coins, no receipts, not a pen or a pocket knife or a phone. Police backtrack Peter's steps to the hotel. They pull his check-in registration and check the address he gave as a home address. It's a fake. The address does not exist in either Austria or in nearby Germany. Soon police are combing through the security footage from cameras in the area. On them they watch Peter come and go, enjoying smoke breaks, wandering through town, all the while holding that purple plastic bag. And police notice an odd pattern. Peter leaves the hotel with the plastic bag full, and he returns with it empty. They assume Peter is discarding the contents of the bag into local trash bins. He's been slowly throwing away the contents of the bag, day after day, over the span of time he was in the hotel. Despite this finding, the police have no way to find out what Peter has discarded. The trash bins have long since been emptied, with Peter's items headed to landfills, mixed and jumbled together with regular trash. For five months, the investigation remains open, but no relatives, friends, or witnesses ever come forward to claim him. Ads are placed in newspapers in Austria and Germany, and there are no replies to them. DNA is taken from Peter, but it is never matched to any person, or to any missing person's case. Peter is buried in Sligo. The only ones attending the funeral are four local police officers. As of 2021, Peter remains unidentified. He had planned his moves out perfectly in order to remain unidentified. We may never know who he really was. Thanks for watching, and thanks for sharing the journey.